Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-64. In our previous episode of the Bard's Podcast, the party was able to break through the cave-in and seek out their missing companion. While separated, Karina had her share of adventure as she wandered the tunnels of the dungeon complex. By the time the rest of the party had caught up to the waif, she was already unconscious. A quick blast of healing from the magical wand had helped her recover, but not in enough time to assist the party with an attack from a carrion crawler. While they were beat up, the group was victorious and inquired to Karina what had transpired while she was alone. We rejoin them as she finishes up her account. And so, I was able to peel it off my head using the dagger. I must admit, I think I stabbed myself at least twice and may have done more to injure myself than that thing did. Just as I killed it, I tried to call under, over, uh, I'm sorry, I tried to crawl over to the torch, but it had already extinguished itself, so I crawled a bit more before I went out, and that's where you found me. The group listened intently as the waif explained the circumstances leading up to the last fight. Nodding in admiration, they congratulated her on being tougher than they thought she was. Fargus took the last swig of a healing potion and seemed as robust as ever. A new torch was lit just as a noise was heard behind yet another door leading out to the throne room. The group assembled at the door with Fargus standing in front of it. He nodded to Bulger who pulled the door open revealing that the ranger's large shadow as the torch was behind him. Another dark figure hovering in the hallway flew in the opposite direction and the human gave chase with his best battle cry. The others were caught off guard but immediately gave chase as well. A winding tunnel led to an irregularly shaped room that appeared to have been a kitchen. Fargus stopped just inside the room, but had lost the floating shadow. As Sister Elaine entered with a torch, an old bag of flour was knocked off the shelf above the entrance and quenched the torchlight, plunging the room into darkness. Chaos ensued as the group went instantly blind except for Cabe, Lady Irena, and Bolger the Gnome. Fargus was smacked upside the head and lost his grip on his blade, which clattered to the floor. In response, the large human made a fist and swung wildly at the creature, striking him, but instead giving a glancing blow to the chin of the bard just as he swung his weapon, causing him to miss. Streaks of light filled the air as the mage began to fire flames from her fingertips, causing Sister Elaine and Karina to drop to the floor lest they be caught in the flames. A loud cry was heard as the squat gnome swung his weapon and found its mark knocking the grell away from Cabe, who was yelling at the ranger to get down. Fargus reluctantly dropped to the floor as the three individuals that could see in the dark formed up and moved to protect their blind associates. The movement jostled the mage, who left off more fire, but missed. The grell dipped low and dragged its hooked tentacles across the face of the former sailor, causing him to yell out in pain. Cabe saw his chance and took it. Swinging his short swords in a scissor motion, the half-elf cut the creature in half, spraying most of the group in the creature's blood. Danger gone! Danger gone, yelled out Cabe Silvertongue. Bulger grabbed the torch and Lady Irena quickly grabbed some flint and steel, striking a flame and re-illuminating the chamber. Two pieces of grell sat near the heads of the cleric and the ranger as the humans regained to their feet. Scanning the area, no other signs of aggressors were present. Cabe nodded to Fargus, who spotted an archway on the far wall. The pair moved over to the opening and the bard leaned in enough to get a good look, revealing that nothing aggressive was within the small pantry. The group backed out of the room to regain their bearings and take a breather. Fargus looked at the others and spoke up, Again? The others nodded and the party re-entered the small pantry, confirming that there were no more obstacles present. A search of the area revealed nothing new and no other exits available. The group backed out and returned to the throne room as they all began to hack and cough. Karina, feeling much better, advised that she would go get some water for everyone and skittered off with a new torch. 
The rest of the group surveyed the room, including the faded but colorful murals adorning the walls. Wounds were bandaged and the area was again cleared. Cabe sat on the throne after it was investigated and began to look over the leather journal that he had found earlier. The coughing continued for several minutes until the bard gave a whistle. The group looked over at him and Lady Irena asked him if he had found something. Actually, yes, I have learned a great deal from this book. The previous owner did really did their homework on this dungeon. While there are several tunnels impassable that are marked in the journal, I believe that we are in the throne room of the complex. Bulger slapped the armrests of the throne, remarking, Do you think so? The statement garnered a smirk from the half-elf who continued, Apparently, we have been very lucky. This entire complex has booby traps all over it. Turning the book on its side and checking the walls, Cabe looked perplexed and pointed out that he had just discovered something else. Well, what is it? inquired Sister Elaine. Well, according to this page, began the half-elf, but stopped at the sound of feet approaching. The group looked to the entrance to see the glow of light approaching, and Fargus playfully chastised the way for taking so long as she entered the room. The group immediately became quiet as they noticed she was not alone. A large orc in a feathered headdress stood behind the young woman, holding a knife to her throat in one hand and the torch in the other. Adaktarkanos, grunted the large humanoid. Lady Irena spoke up, stating, He wants us to... But Fargus interrupted her. Yeah, drop our weapons. Got it. The clattering of metal on the stone began to ring out as the party slowly disarmed themselves. Chach, mo fuego, nodded the orc to one side. Slowly the party moved towards the corner as directed, as the humanoid made his way towards their weapons using Karina as a human shield. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.